Welcome to part two of my cliffhanger cutout video. Uh, today's video is going to be the actual painting process and the final assembly because I did not completely assemble it in the prior video. This video is to be a guide on how to paint this coaster cutout. I hope you all enjoy this and let's get into the painting action. First things first, we need to go over the materials that you will need if you're wanting to do this. I am wanting to paint the red train, but these are all of the primary colors that uh, you're going to need to paint either of the trains because the colors are just simply swapped. So I'm going to use this brilliant red, which does look a lot more brilliant than the packaging does. It's a very nice bright red. It's a perfect match to the train. Next up, we got this deep yellow, which if you wanted to do the yellow train, you'd just use this as your primary color. And then this red um, as that secondary color, but this is mainly going to be on the restraints, backs of the trains, that kind of thing. And then this is going to be the seat and part of the restraints. The next set of colors that I have to show you, these are all going to be the going the extra mile because I am going to paint in, in detail the logo. Hopefully, I have no idea how it's going to go, but these are the colors that I'm going to be needing for that. Uh, primarily these two and then this one, I'm going to have to probably mix with this one a little bit to get a bit more pigmentation, but this is like the background color and then these are the two main logo colors. And then the last, well, not quite, but I'm also going to need this one, which will be explained a bit later. This is just for a really tiny detail uh, about like some kind of stopper thing on the front of the train. And finally, uh, I think I'm going to go with this copper to paint the um, stand because I think that the copper is kind of the vibe of Dr. Diabolical, but I don't know how good this paint is because opening it up, it's kind of like not well blended together. So we will see how that goes. Next thing you're gonna need is some paintbrushes. Uh, I have, well, they wanna roll away, but I've got this uh, uh, pack of them. They're all from the Artist's Loft, same brand of all the paints, which I believe you can find at like Michael's, stuff like that. Um, some of these are kind of permanently stained from old projects, but yeah, um, I don't know which ones of these exactly I plan on using yet, but I will most likely be using this one. And then for detailing in the logo, I am going to be using some even smaller paint brushes than the smallest in this kit, which would be this one. Um, they're my nail art brushes because, well, I do nail art. So I will also be using some of my small nail art brushes, which I guess I'll go on and pull out to show you. These guys are my small nail art brush offerings. Uh, this one I need to clean better, but as you can see, these are very tiny. This one is actually just a paintbrush from Walmart that I just cut uh, to make even smaller. As you can see here, it is super, super, super tiny. You're going to need just a couple more things if you're planning on painting. You're going to need a cup for water. Don't question this. This is literally nail polish. All of this from Special Nail Art, but this is my junk cup. You'll need a cup for water to clean your paint brushes. You're going to need something to put your paints on. This happens to be the container for all of my paint brushes. It just comes with this built-in. Also, pro tip, clean it when you're like done for your painting session or whatever because I did not clean this after painting the New Texas Giant coaster cutout and I just had to go do that and that was terrible. I had to use like hot water and scrub with a knife. Yeah, just clean it while the paint is still wet. Trust me. And paper towel to dry off the paintbrushes on uh, once you have cleaned them. So now that we've gathered our supplies, we can begin. Let's get painting. The stand will be assembled, I guess, once I do the painting, because that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to start with the uh, bottom here of the train, which should be 
fairly easy, pretty much. Um, all of this is just going to get painted red. <laughs> so uh, let's get into that. I'm going to be using that uh, brilliant red that I showed you guys earlier. Easy peasy, I am going to put my um, mat from the last video under here, but I just don't need it quite yet, and the desk just looks nicer, though I have cleaned the mat this time. Um, yeah, literally the entire bottom is red. Also, I don't like that this red paint is a little sheer, so I am gonna have to do two to three layers on these. I'm only gonna do two, because this is the bottom. Yeah, I gotta get like all these um, side areas now I'm moving to a smaller paintbrush I was just using a number 12 flat brush I'm gonna move on to a number eight flat and then probably even maybe down to a number two flat um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this this little guy right here um, I'm not gonna fill in those circles yet but this is still gonna be the red um, as is this so pretty much all of this is gonna be red except this let's keep going Finished up with that. The next thing to tackle is gonna be getting the all of the uh, outside edges done. got all of the bottom area done i am pretty happy with how this is looking we got these sides the next thing that i think i'd like to paint is actually gonna be the um logo piece so it's gonna be interesting i know i mentioned it earlier but i don't have a paint that's a good match for um this color um, so I'm gonna have to mix one up, but, uh, filling in these places is gonna be black. There's gonna be some black involved in this. I still have no clue how I'm gonna be painting that, except that I'll be needing my nail art brushes. I do have a good color, though, for the actual text. So I think I'm gonna just go ahead and, uh, start with the black using a very, very small brush. So let's get into that. <laughs> That has been so much effort to paint 
in these lines. Now, I will say, um, on the ride vehicle, I just double checked, but uh, this, this pattern continues in the middle, but it's not on here, and it would drive me insane if I didn't space it out uh, evenly uh, if I do that. So I'm thinking um, that, um, I just wiped the desk that I'm thinking I'm just gonna paint this background here black because yeah, like I said, I'm going to be driven to insanity <laughs> if I try recreating this and it doesn't, it's not even. So uh, it's probably smarter not to try. That took forever, but I finally mixed up a color that I feel like is a decent match for the color that goes in these areas. Um, it's really challenging color because it's got like some pinky undertones, but for the most part, it's kind of a tan. So this is what I ended up with, and I did not need this amount of paint, but um, that's what it took for me to feel happy with it. So uh, let's get that done. Oh my god, if I thought doing like the lines was hard, no. Because <laughs> um, they didn't continue that line, I had to do so myself right there. And that was so challenging trying to get it straight and get both colors in there. I broke out one of my nail art brushes for it. There was like no way I could have done that without my nail art brush, but. Uh, I'm really pleased with this. I know that after all that, the color is very similar to that of the wood, but it's worth it. Uh, the next step is to fill in uh, the actual text and then uh, figure out how to take care of these logos. I used my nail art brush to get the Dr. Diabolicals, but I'm gonna move on to one of these actual paint brushes to paint cliffhanger because it would take a uh, hundred years to paint cliffhanger with that tiny brush.
Yeah, this has been hard, but honestly not as bad as I was thinking it would be, though I definitely would not be able to do it without my nail art brushes like this guy. With this guy completely dry, now it's time to move on to the wheel. So I'm gonna go set this off to the side and bring in our wheels. Um, this is going to require like um, the unbleached titanium. I'm going to also be using uh, Naples yellow, silver, gray, and then a dash of red right at the top here. So let's get painting.
I wanted to put it on the record that you didn't need to paint like the very top parts of these. I just chose to because these are going to be up against the bottom of the train so no one's ever going to see that but I chose to. Um, my thing, I think I'm going to actually go on and break the silver out again because I would like to cover up these little spots in case these move. Um, yeah, just a warning to you, if yours move around a lot, I would make sure you paint every bit of it. I am so excited to finally, finally be done painting these wheels. So I'm gonna put these guys off to the side. And the next part that I've decided I'd like to work on is these guys, which uh, use three colors. We're gonna be using the Brilliant Red, Deep Yellow, and Gray. Um, let's get to painting these guys. There are a lot of them. <laughs> I would like to take this moment to express that I am annoyed. So, this is literally two coats. Will it focus? There it is. That's literally two coats. And like, look at this difference. It's only got like a yellow tint. It's not even like yellow. Um, so, uh, my recommendation, if you were to do this, is with this particular paint is that I would put like a white uh, as the very first coat on these edges. Um, because looking at the paint now, it actually says it's a transparent paint, so that would explain that. So I'm gonna see what a third coat does um, on this, and if I don't like, I'm not doing more than three coats. And if a third coat is not enough, which, I mean, looking at this, do we really think it will be? So if third coat is not enough, uh, I'm just gonna go on and paint all of these edges white and then try again because this is irritating. So you've seen that, I've painted that second coat and it just isn't doing it for me because that's like the third one so it's gonna take probably at least four or five and i'm not gonna do that so <sighs> time to break out uh i'm not gonna use a white i'm gonna use the um unbleached titanium which is like an off-white kind of creamy with like a slight yellow base which i mean you saw before i used it on the road wheels but uh, i think that that's gonna work out well as a good base because this is crazy.
just one coat of that covers so nicely. So uh, now it's time to do this one more time with the yellow. I'm really curious to see how well this uh, compares to like the yellow we have here. So yeah, um, I'll be honest though, I was pretty set on just like continuing to do multiple coats of yellow. This is an excellent lesson in work smarter, not harder. Look at that, just like one coat of the yellow over that, and that is exactly what I'm looking for. It doesn't need to be completely perfect, as you can see, you know, we've still got some, like, little lines where you can tell, but, you know, I don't care. That is the amount of coverage I'm looking for right here. So, I'm so happy to be done with the yellow on these. Um, next, I'm gonna move on to the red. That was a bit of a task trying to get this all even. So um, what I'm going to do as my next step is go on and paint the uh, inside layer here so that I have a guide for the other side as to where on each one of these I need to paint to make sure that it's completely even. I am so glad to have these done. Uh, the next step is gonna be um, these guys, and I have a little bit of paint left over from this gray that I've been working on, so I'm just gonna slap that on here real fast, and then I'm gonna actually like work on them, but I'm gonna take a break before I do.
I'm being smart and now that I know before um, going on and painting any of the yellow I'm gonna go ahead and use that unbleached titanium um, on all of on the edge and then on these two little spots right there just so that um, that yellow can cover well on the first try I have come to the realization somehow I forgot to paint this so now uh, the next step is to go back in and fix that before being done I'm not gonna do a second coat of the yellow mainly because I just don't want to but um, I'm gonna do that next coat of uh, gray oh the coat of gray that I forgot on this one and then uh, move on to the seats, finally. Quick update, um, we're done with like the yellow, pretty much the rest of this back of the seat's gonna be red. I'm gonna go on and paint the bottom red as well. Yeah, and then we're just gonna move on to the gray on the front and the sides. And then um, we'll be done with these seats and then we'll be able to move on to assembling and painting the stand.
I am absolutely thrilled to finally be done with painting the main body of the train. So we finished up these seats. I gave them a bit of time for the bottoms to dry so that I can actually um, put everything together. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the restraints onto the seats. Um, and then we can put everything together. So I guess I'll go through and do one of them uh, before going into the time lapse. So we're gonna start with this guy. Um, I mean, I'm interested to see how easily everything is gonna go on now with all this paint because the paint does make stuff thicker. So it does make things a bit harder, I feel like. This one does not want to go on. Oh, oh boy. That could very well be wise. It was completely blocked. <coughs> I'm done. There we go. Because this paint is still, um, I guess one could say like setting that somehow scraped off. That's uh, the first one done. And then now, just got to put these guys in. Oh, that looks really good. Which, this is nice and easy. Yeah, and now to repeat that six more times. Got all these assembled. Some of these were kind of hard to get on. The next step, I haven't actually really looked at this thing in a while. Ah, oh, it still looks so good. Um, now it's time to actually start putting these seats in. So let's do the first one. Let's see here. What, I'm, mm, okay. What is the best way to get this in? Oh, that sound was like, terrible but that's actually very easy to get in um i recommend just kind of wiggling it a little bit back and forth so yep as you can see um that's in there so yeah uh time for me to time lapse doing the rest of them i'm gonna um me zoom out a little so you can see better The next step here is uh, to put the wheels on the underside of the train. So this is um, extremely awkward with filming overhead and trying to do this. So let me just zoom out for you. Alrighty, so the wheels go in here and here. That's in a uh, time lapse of the second one. So the next step is just going to be to um, assemble and paint the base, which should be fairly easy. I was really hoping to finish this video with one manicure. Um, uh, it's been like uh, a week since I last filmed and yeah, my nails are very different. If, some of them have come off, but uh, if you can figure out what these are, well, I, I guess I'll just pin the comment, but uh, yeah, if you can figure out what these are with two missing, uh, have fun with that. So, um, this is uh, stand time now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these pieces punched out. We got uh, this guy, which just, you know, fell out on its own.
cool. So um, that is every single piece now. So um, it's time to just assemble the stand. So the first step is this one is just gonna go right in these two holes um, and just kind of help support those other two pieces. So and then these two pieces are identical, but we're just gonna slide this first one right in here. Ah, that's beautiful, perfect fit. Anyways, I did get that assembled. I ended up pretty much just, you can see the lines on my hand, but I just kind of pressed on it with my wrist and that helped it go in. So um, now it's time to paint it. Um, just like with the giant one, I'm leaving this logo for last. Um, this one should be fairly easy. I mean, it's just the basic Six Flags logo. I literally just did the tiniest bit of time-lapse just pouring the paint. I don't know if you can see it well, but you can see it's just like, there's clear and then there's the actual like pigment. It's just like really separated. This is like so bad. Uh, so I think I first have to try and kind of mix it. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, my phone just kind of had a bit of a glitch and it missed some of this painting, but this paint isn't great. It's kind of getting clumpy. So, um, I'm kind of scraping away some excess with my fingers and like just painting it here and just cleaning off this brush a lot. But, um, the smaller parts are pretty much done for, yeah. So now it's just a uh, larger spaces. I've given this some time to dry, so now we're gonna uh, fill it in. Um, yeah, so I did have to pull out some more colors. The Six Flags, that just gets filled in black. Fiesta Texas is gonna be red, the background is red, so we, I've shown you we're using Mars Black, brilliant red. Um, and then I had to get out colors for these various flags. So we're going to be using that deep yellow and the orange that I've used before. But I've also pulled out Violet, light green, this, uh, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, but this is phthalo blue, and then also this blue light. Um, 
to uh, color in those flags. So let's get started with that. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the red to paint in the Fiesta Texas and then the background for the um, flags. So let's get into that. super exciting to officially say all the painting is complete this came out really well it was very hard to get like the little stems of the flags it's not like perfect on some of them but you know it doesn't need to be also this copper is like extremely reflective and you know i have like a bright light like right up there off camera but it's just like whoa <laughs> To be honest, I didn't quite realize this paint was going to be this reflective. I'm not sure. Yeah, anyway, um, it's time to actually put the train on this. So, yes, that is super exciting. So I'm going to zoom out for that. And yeah, you can see my messy workspace. You have no clue how close this is to touching my phone. But anyway... We have our four mounting points on the bottom right there that just connect here. Oh, hello. One side is officially in. Now to get the second side in. That is all the way in and assembled, so um, it's hard to even really get the entire, yeah, I can't get the whole thing in my phone, so I'm gonna pick it up, but it's all done. Wait, can't we, let's see, let's see, will it even fit? Ha, it does fit under my phone with just a few inches to spare, yeah. Keep in mind, I do have the light overhead, but this, Looks really cool. The train has like a pretty significant like slant, but um, yeah, that is so exciting that that's finally done. Yes, I know the background is a disaster, okay? I film where I can, but this looks awesome. I think that that copper base really works well for this. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this guide useful. I really enjoyed painting this. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you think anyone else would be interested, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!